2017 Renault Twingo GT UK Review. 6. Point. What is it? When we drove the Renault Twingo GT on its international launch, we found it to be a city car that didn't quite live up to its promise on paper. The thought of a Renault Sport fettled rear-engined, rear-wheel drive pocket rocket had expectations soaring, however the reality wasn't quite so dramatic. But let's be clear, the Twingo GT is not technically a fully-fledged Renault Sport model, this is no successor to the riotous Renault Sport Twingo 133, but rather a top-spec variant of the Twingo City car. Don't dismiss this as a limp new trim level though, because the revisions to it are significant. Although it has the same turbocharged 898 cubic centimeters three-cylinder unit as the standard model, it's had a power hike taking it from 8.9 bhp to 109 bhp thanks to a remap and an air vent above the left rear wheel arch which stuffs more cold air into the intake. The suspension has been worked on, too. Renault Sport has made it 40% stiffer, made the front anti-roll bar thicker and lowered the ride height by 20 millimeters. It could cope with the smooth French tarmac we tested it on, but we're driving the car in the UK to see how these suspension revisions cope with our roads. What's it like? Those adjustments definitely make it feel quicker, and there's no doubt that this is the most entertaining version of the Twingo you can buy. In a straight line it will just about see off a of Volkswagen up 1.0 TSI, making it one of the quicker new city cars on sale, and around town its pace is very usable. It's not particularly gutsy, but it's fairly keen off the line, with a throaty three-cylinder engine and a slick, precise five-speed manual gearbox with shorter ratios than the standard Twingo. Its natural habitat is the city and that is where it excels, especially with its ludicrously tight turning circle, but it's certainly well-powered enough to manage long motorway schleps. There are some drawbacks, though. While it is quite sprightly, the power delivery lags with its turbocharger so there is an awkward surge of power that lumbers in around 2000 rpm, and its pedal weights are very light. Even higher up the rev band there's a noticeable delay before the power kicks in. While it has some usable city car pace you're unlikely to notice the engine is in the back and it's a rear wheel drive layout because the metal some ESP cuts in quite abruptly, which is a shame. It's been made less intrusive compared with the standard model, but you still can't turn it off. The steering remains very light and vague which isn't so bad for tight maneuvers in cities but it doesn't give you a good indication of what the front wheels are doing, and its quick rack makes it feel twitchy at speed even with a variable ratio setup. Still, when you're in the mood, it feels an agile thing, and the suspension revisions help it feel keener and flatter through the corners. It's also still a relatively comfortable car. The stiffer suspension rode well when we tested it in France, and our first drive in the UK shows it can put up with our rough roads even on its standard 17IN alloys. Potholes do give the car a jolt, but over most surfaces it rides without complaint. The interior is fairly pleasant. The tall body provides lots of headroom for the front too, but predictably adults won't be especially comfy in the back. The 7.0 in touchscreen infotainment system is responsive and easy to use and comes as part of the 600 pounds Techno Pack R link that adds a reversing camera and DAB among other things, which is well worth a tick on the options list. The seats don't offer a great deal of support, and you can't adjust the reach on the steering wheel, but it's a relatively comfortable driving position. It does become noisy in the cabin though. Wind and road noise is a big problem at high speeds, so it can be quite tiresome to drive for long stints even if the engine can handle it, especially because the dynamics aren't sharp enough to keep you interested. Should I buy one? This Twingo GT is a quirky and quick alternative in the city car class, and it's a welcome addition to the segment, even if it does lean more towards harmless city car runaround rather than hardened enthusiasts play thing. Against the slower, less practical, and extremely pricey Smart Brabus 44 the Twingo GT looks a bargain. Against the cheaper, slightly slower but better to drive Volkswagen up, however, the Twingo GT is harder to recommend.
If you want a warm city runaround then it would also be worth stretching your budget, for less than £1,000 extra, to a Suzuki Swift Sport, or a little bit more to a Ford Fiesta ST line with a characterful 1.0 liter EcoBoost engine. Plus, the UP GDI which is slated for a 2018 promises a lot judging from our early prototype drive, so competition is set to get even tougher. The bottom line is, while the Twingo GT is a likable city car it doesn't offer the impressive warm hatch driving dynamics that many of its rivals do. Renault Twingo GT Location, Gloucester On sale, now Price, £13,755 Engine, 3 sills, 898 cubic centimeters, turbocharged, petrol Power, 109 bhp at 5750 rpm Torque, 125 pounds foot at 2000 rpm Gearbox, 5 SPD manual Curb weight, 1001 kilograms 0 to 62 miles per hour, 9.6 SEC Top speed, 113 miles per hour Economy, 54.3 mpg, combined CO2 rating slash big tax band, 115g slash km, 20% Rivals, Smart Brabus 44, Volkswagen up 1.0 TSI